Over the years, I've sent $40,000 to Maria. The fans of 90 Day Fiance think that Caesar is an absolute cuck, simp, loser, lame. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining why. Caesar is a 46 year old nail technician from Jacksonville, North Carolina. The majority of fans think that Caesar's a loser because he's one of those old, lonely men that falls for the online dating scams where you pay to talk to a woman abroad. The websites I'm referencing are like seeking arrangements, but for dudes on a budget. Ha uh, ha, old American man seeking arrangement with youthful Ukrainian woman. <sighs> when Caesar's first introduced, he admits to the audience that he learned how to do nails from his ex-girlfriend. This girl was Caesar's high school sweetheart and they dated for 13 years. And would you believe it, in 13 years, he never thought to put a ring on her finger and she taught him how to do nails. She sister leveled him up so that he could use those skills on another girl. When Caesar was first introduced, he only said a couple sentences about this girl he was with for 13 years before brushing it under the rug and then just continuing to talk about this Ukrainian girl that he's seeking an arrangement with and glorifying. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments, but I hate when they do this on those reality TV shows because if you were with somebody for 13 years, like I would love to know more about that relationship. Anyways, Caesar tells us that he's a hopeless romantic and he wants to live in a dreamland with somebody. This dude's like a Taylor Swift song, not her new pop garbage, the old stuff that was good, like White Horse. This is Maria, the girl that Caesar claims to be in a relationship with, and she's 28 years old from Ukraine. Caesar says, we met on Anastasia Date. It's a very special website that brings Americans and Ukrainian women to meet each other for a small price. For a small price, you can meet real Ukrainian women. Wow, as opposed to just going over there to Ukraine, going to a bar and pick picking up a girl that way, you get to pay to talk to these girls. What a bargain. But how do you know that the girls that are shown in the pictures are the girls that you're talking to? You don't. This website he's talking about is an absolute scam. The goal isn't to create lasting relationships between the American men and the Ukrainian women. No, it is to get as much money as possible from these lonely old men that are on the websites. A couple years back, the OG Wet Sock subscribers will remember that I made a series of videos on David and Lana, Computer David and Lana the Scammer. And in one of those videos, I conducted an interview with Alex Pinto, the leader of the Ukrainian Matchmakers Alliance. And in this video I'm referencing, Alex explained the difference between legitimate matchmaking companies in Ukraine and fraudulent ones. Websites like the one Caesar met Maria on are just a way for young Eastern European women to make money by pretending to be interested in loser dudes. What's that, Spectre? You want to talk to me, but I have to pay you $10,000? Huh, okay. Caesar tells the audience, Anastasia Date has a unique system. You can buy flowers, candy, then it's up to the girl if she wants to respond. Funny enough, Caesar then shows us a card that he sent to Maria with his name, his email, and also a bouquet of red roses. And guess how much it costs him, ladies and gentlemen? $450. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. $450 to send roses to a girl in Ukraine? If that isn't a scam, I don't know what is. You don't really twist my titties. This man's giving his hard earned American dollars to a woman solely based on her looks that he's never met in real life. And you know what the most ironic thing about this is? Is that you can't even feel bad for dudes like this because they're so gullible and they're giving their hard earned money to these girls. They're asking to be used because if you don't want to be treated like a fan, don't don't act like a fan. I quickly googled how much it would be to send roses to somebody in Ukraine and there's a delivery service that charges $35 which is already a high price but this guy got charged $450 so you just got to think about the profit margins that websites like this make off these loser dudes. It's actually a really profitable business. She's kind, she's smart, funny, she makes me feel special. She is my soulmate. Maria sends him messages like, Hi baby, hope you had a lovely day at work. I love you, my man. Soon we will be together. Funny enough for these messages that were sent by Maria to Caesar, it's very possible that they were not actually sent by her because the models of these websites come with an assistant and the assistants of these models will usually text the simpy dudes on their behalf because they literally can't be bothered as the Brits say. Caesar then brags to the audience that Maria gives him pet names like Big Daddy, Baby, My Man, My Love. Why do you think that she does that, man? Because she probably sends that to a lot of dudes. Obviously, she's sending video messages to multiple guys for max profits and the videos that she sent Caesar are so low effort I'm talking about just going like this hello my baby oh I hope you have a great day love you if you're doing the situation and you hear a girl say my husband my baby my king you're getting scammed you think she's sending those videos to anyone else I hope she's not sending those videos to anyone else does she ever say your name <laughs> Caesar tells us that Maria doesn't really like him 
this dude is questioning his entire existence right now. I'm so happy that they asked him that. What about my boy Caesar's not even getting personalized messages and he dropped $450 on flowers. That's an L. Next we see a video of this scammer saying, I love you, my baby. Something I don't really understand about guys like Caesar is that you seek these girls based on looks, but not for adding value to your life, which doesn't make much sense to me. You would think that if you want a partnership and you're looking for someone that you want to grow old with, you would want someone that adds value to your life when you are adding value to their life so it's equal. Next we see Caesar speak with a client about his relationship with Maria. During this conversation with the client, we learn that Caesar has been dating Maria for about five years. He says she has a good heart and she cares about me for me. Yeah, we can see that by how you're paying this girl to talk to you. She's a receptionist. She's not getting paid that much, so I'm trying to at least help her and send her money. Like a lot. I give her probably about like, um, probably about like $800 a month. Ben, hold on, I failed calculus twice. So $800 times 12 months times five years is $48,000. How crazy is that, that this man could have put that money towards opening his own salon and making that bread, but instead he sent it all to a scammer. Dude must be a tourist because when he sees those red flags, he just sprints right towards him. <laughs> the American dollar goes a long way in Ukraine. She needs to buy clothes for herself, pay for cable and internet. Over the years, I've sent $40,000 to Maria. The problem that I see with Caesar is that he's solely infatuated with Maria based on her physical appearance. And as we know, looks fade in 20 years, this girl's gonna look like every other babushka in the area. I'm like, I'm like overboard excited to go meet her. It's gonna be everything I dreamed of. Simpy Caesar has made every attempt to meet up with Maria in real life, but she's provided many excuses to not meet up with him. Right now, Caesar's communicating to Maria that he wants to meet her friends and family and grow closer as a couple, and she's thinking, hell no. Maria responds, well, right now is not good time because it's too cold weather, so how about we go on a tropical vacation to Mexico instead, Caesar? Maria figures that if Simpy Cuck Loser Lame's gonna rip a trip anyway and pay for everything, she might as well check Mexico off the bucket list. Caesar communicates to the audience that over the past five years, on three different occasions, he's planned trips to Ukraine to come and see this girl and she's given him three BS reasons each time for why she can't show up or why he can't come to Ukraine to visit her. Caesar then adds that he really wants to meet Maria in real life so that he can see where this is going when we all know where it's going. Bankruptcy. Caesar communicates to Maria that the Mexico trip is going to be very hard to pay for because Mexico is way more expensive than Ukraine but then he says something very interesting that the audience wasn't expecting to hear. Uh, I'll tell you what I do. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna work harder. Work harder, that's your takeaway? This man's willing to work overtime despite the disrespectful way that this woman treats him. I think he thinks because he's already invested so much money into this relationship that he has to see this woman in real life. So funny enough, he actually gets the money together for the Mexico trip, or so he thought. This dude also goes to a jewelry store to buy an engagement ring for his internet girlfriend that he's never met in real life before. To make matters even funnier, when Caesar flew to Mexico, it turns out that the airline lost his bag for a second and he put his engagement ring in the bag. And airlines have lost my bag and it has her engagement ring in it. An engagement ring seems like something you would place in a carry-on bag so that you have it on you and you know that it's safe because that costs quite a bit of coin, but what is common sense for us is not common sense for Caesar. No shade, just facts. When Caesar finally gets his suitcase, he goes back to the hotel room and opens it up to show the audience what's inside, and funny enough, he got Maria gummy panties and chocolate panties. Forget first base, my man Caesar is already thinking chocolate panties, and how does that work exactly? Because those of us that have engaged in physical activities know that your body temperature goes up, right? So if you're wearing chocolate panties, like, does it look like you shit yourself? When Maria arrives tomorrow, I'm gonna propose to her because I do love her and she's the most important person in my life. Caesar, come on, man. This girl has avoided you like the plague because she thought that you were a weird dude. Why are you gonna prove her to be right? Proposing when you first meet somebody in real life is the weirdest shit ever. Like, how do you know that you wanna spend the rest of your life with someone when you haven't even smelled their farts yet? You don't even know if you love her gas. Oh yeah. Oh, she was just on a minute ago. Anyway, Caesar ordered a salad. <laughs> nah, just dad jokes. He's actually talking to the hotel staff about setting up a romantic dinner for him and Maria. This is a romantic dinner, okay? The beach, or could be at the gazebo. This shit do be looking romantic though. Add some fireworks and some rose petals and bam, we got ourselves an engagement, ladies and gentlemen. Let's look at the food options right now. Ooh, we got a little surf and turf. I think lobster's overrated at this point. I prefer crab legs. The staff member then asks Caesar if Maria has any food allergies and he responds that he doesn't know. And I'm just like, bitch, like what did you talk about for five years? If any one of y'all were talking to somebody for five years, I would assume that they would have the entire autobiography by now. I'm on a budget right now. And so, you know, I kind of wanted to make it look nice 
but kind of be as, as cheap as possible. It's 140. Caesar's like, y'all got any hamburger helper or not? Nah? Dude has about $3 and he's acting like a sixth grader that got his first girlfriend. For example, willing to be filet and it's 120. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll take that. If you're in Mexico, why would you want to eat this kind of food? Lobster bisque? Like, are you fucking kidding me? How about Dungeness crab enchiladas? Also $120 per person in Mexico, you're trolling. He must have the same financial advisor as my dad. Caesar's much like an NPC because every single person he meets, he has to tell them the story of him and Maria. So he tells this woman that is in charge of the meals at the hotel that he's planning on proposing to Maria and he's never met her in real life. And this lady thinks that he's absolutely batshit crazy. And as we've seen from that loser from the Try Guys that got caught cheating on his wife if you make the most interesting part of your personality your relationship you're cringe the hotel staff member then tells caesar that this dinner is non-refundable and he says non-refundable i'm gonna be spending more money on this woman say less minus 240 dollars later caesar decides to go cool his head off at the pool you would have thought this pool was maria's dms because he dives in and then he sees a nice family over at the bar area and decides to swim over to them and tell them about his nifty relationship with the scammer in ukraine i'm uh i'm here to see my soon-to-be wife she's coming from ukraine <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm hoping to bring her out to the beach to propose. Uh, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Only time we see each other was on the computer. He's like an NPC from Skyrim repeating the same five phrases. This is my girlfriend, Maria from Ukraine. I spent over $40,000 on her. We've been talking for about five years. I met her online on a scam dating site. I'm gonna propose to her. Oh my goodness. Oh, holy yeah. smokes. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's, that's her right there. She's gorgeous. Wow. You're not being catfished, man. <laughs> 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 this kid's a savage. The whole family starts bursting out laughing at Caesar, and legend says that they're still laughing to this day. Imagine how weird this is for this family. Like, you're on family vacation, you're at the bar, chilling out with your family, and some rando pulls up to talk about his whack ass relationship with a girl in Ukraine. Caesar says to the audience, I was shocked the guy at the end said Maria was a catfish. That's the love of my life. I know she's not a catfish. Uh, on a technicality, Caesar's right for once because she does look the same as she's portraying herself in the photos, but she is a scammer. Later in the evening, after after revealing how foolish and gullible he is to this random family, Caesar goes back to the hotel room and gets disturbing news. And that news is that Maria's flight was canceled. Oh no! Maria's supposed to be here in Mexico with me right now, but I just found out that her reservation was canceled. Oh wow, well, what's sad news? I'm sure that Maria was really looking forward to this fan meet and greet. Caesar then texts Maria and asks her why she canceled the flight, and Maria's like, I didn't cancel the flight, I can't cancel it because I didn't book it. Which made sense when you stop to think about it, but Caesar's still sussed out because this is the fourth time that he's trying to meet up with this girl in real life and she continues to provide whatever excuse possible to not meet up with this dude so he decides to call the airline and figure out what happened hello my name is noah how can i help <laughs> hello my name is noah how can i help doesn't say the name of the airline tlc how dumb do you think the audience of this show is if this is a real airline rep then i'm the macho man randy savage yo this is no what seems to be the problem oh you want to talk to my supervisor wait a second hey this is braxton the supervisor or whatever it's uh five five Six, one, one, three, one. Just one moment, sir. Thank you. Uh... <laughs> oh, that fast. You expect us to believe an airline rep punching those numbers that fast? Do you know how long the hold times is when you call an airline rep? Oh my gosh, they can't even act it out right. You guys travel the entire world filming these international relationships. You would think that you'd be able to fake this or improv this effectively. So we have a flight from Kiev to Cancun and you're saying that this reservation was canceled. Is that right? Yes, because I didn't do anything. I didn't cancel it, but I just wanted to see who did. You understand that the airline canceled your reservation, right? So Caesar's airline rep goes on to explain that the flight was canceled because he had insufficient funds in his account, something that you would get an email notification for before the flight if it was legit. With Caesar and Maria's segment concerned, TLC really dragged it on, so I'm happy that I could give you the summary of what went down. In summary, four time is not the charm. Maria did show up to Mexico, Caesar clapped no cheats, and I'm guessing that he wore those chocolate panties to bed and himself to sleep. So sad to see gummy and chocolate panties go to waste. He should have called up Big Ed and found out where the nearest whorehouse was in Mexico. Very similar to the David and Lana situation, many fans assumed that Maria was in fact a man in Nigeria. Millions doubted that she was the girl in the photo. Until the fans saw Maria on an episode talking to her friends about her failed trip to Mexico with Caesar. Surprisingly enough, Maria looks exactly like her photos and when we first see her, she's grabbing drinks with her friends talking about her recent trip to Dubai. Did you meet someone in Dubai? Like, like a laugh or what? Tell me honestly. <laughs> I will tell you later. 
Really good to know that the money that Caesar's sending to Maria and however much money other dudes are sending her are going to a good cause, the Maria Travel the World Foundation. Maria's friend says, It's very rare you can meet a really good guy in Ukraine, so our standards are higher than what we have here. I'll bet your standards are so high that you do your makeup like Ursula from The Little Mermaid. <laughs> higher standards, huh? That's why you got an 80s haircut. I haven't seen that cut since I watched The Goonies. Anyways, at this Gold Digger meetup, they discuss Maria and Caesar's trip to Mexico that never ended up happening. Two days before my flight, I'm checking online and just cancel. I discover he have not enough money to buy this plane ticket for me. It's strange. He started to be rude to me, so I decided to break up with him. He doesn't deserve your forgiveness. <laughs> Wait, so he doesn't deserve her forgiveness and he sent her over $40,000 the past five years they've been talking and she's mad because he assumed that she canceled the ticket because she's made every excuse to not meet up with this dude in real life and he doesn't deserve forgiveness for that? That's a pretty whack take, but what would I expect from the girl that looks like a storm cloud emoji? She goes on to say, he sent you some money, but he didn't send you a huge amount of money. Then Maria has the nerve to add, no, he didn't. So I guess $40,000 American isn't a lot of money to these big ballers and you Ukraine that make their money by scamming old cringe dudes on the internet. Unappreciative women like this turn men into absolute monsters. Crazy enough, Maria goes on to shame Caesar for doing nails for a living. She's not in a position where she should be looking down on anybody's job, especially when he's done the most to send money to her. Not to mention Maria just came back from Dubai. For all we know, she's one of those girls that gets flown out to get shit on or fuck a camel. So who is she to judge anybody? The producers then ask Maria if any other guys have sent her money over the years and she responds no, but then smiles and starts laughing and looking away so she's obviously lying. They then ask Maria how much money Caesar has sent her at a time and she responds, I don't know, I'm not accountant. <laughs> I am not accountant. I actually thought that this was funny. This is what I want to respond when anybody asks me a math question. My best subject in school was PE. So thank God YouTube worked out right. What exactly he told you the last time he appeared in your life again? He said like, I'm sorry. I want to back to you. I want to like renew our relationship. Renew our relationship. She's talking about this like it's a gym membership or something. <laughs> If we take a step back and look at this from Maria's perspective, I don't know why she wouldn't renew this deal. It's a pretty sick deal. She gets about a thousand dollars a week or every two weeks and all she has to do is talk to this loser online and never actually meet him in real life. Shockingly enough, Maria then says to the audience that if Caesar wants a girl like her, he better go make more money. Woo, this girl thinks she's way prettier than she is and I see why she targets guys like Caesar because this would never work on a guy my age. She then adds salt onto injury because she admits that her and Caesar are still friends even though they're not dating, which translates to he's still paying to talk to me. I find it very cruel that this girl openly acknowledges that it's a struggle for Caesar to financially support her and send her money, but she still wants to milk him for everything he's got. When Maria broke up with Caesar, she told him maybe in another life they'd be together, which is such a tough pill to swallow. Like, hey bro, thanks for the $40,000. When you get reincarnated, maybe you can send another 40. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think in the comments, but I'm over these simpy dudes that want remorse from everybody or want everybody to feel bad for them. If you're financially overextending yourself to bring in a woman because you think that she's the most beautiful girl ever, that's on you. A big red flag for me as a viewer is that before Maria even comes out, Caesar's looking so sad, explaining his side of the story, trying to get remorse and get everybody to feel bad for him and gang up on Maria before she even comes out. Funny enough, Maria actually showed up to the before the 90 days tell all. She didn't show up in person because let's be honest, there's that saying, you don't want to meet your heroes in real life. You don't want to meet your simps in real life. So she was on that little TV. The minute Maria Maria joins the other cast members on the tell-all. They play a flashback of when Maria met the film crew for the first time. I joined Anastasia Dele maybe eight years ago. A lot of girls know about this site in Ukraine because a lot of men around the world want to date Ukrainian girls. She then proceeds to show us how she makes these videos that she sends to multiple men on the site. Hello, my baby. I love you. Send me your money. I'm genuinely curious if as a child, Caesar suffered some kind of brain injury because I feel like my 14 year old self had more common sense than his almost 50 year old self. Maria admits to the audience that when Caesar first began to message her on the website, she thought that he seemed really nice. This has to be the first time I've seen her pay this dude a compliment. They then play a video that Caesar sent to Maria and in said video, he's wearing a suit that he looks like he got off a dead guy. I believe it was the great philosopher Kanye West who said, I dress to impress myself. Clearly Caesar doesn't know anything about that because he doesn't have one fitted suit. Anyways, in this video, Caesar says, yeah, baby, your man loves you. I look sexy, you like that? Dude staying on brand saying a whole bunch of things to a woman he met online that he shouldn't be saying, but this is just typical 90 day behavior. Maria then admits to the audience that her type is usually tall guys with blonde hair and blue eyes. So yeah, von stinkin' von Hutenhain, huh? 
Am I right? Miss Hitler Youth over here. Funny enough, after their relationship is already over, Caesar then finds out on the tell-all that her type is blonde hair and blue eyes. So I think he's probably gonna go rip that same wig that Tyler the Creator wore in that earthquake song the next day. Wait, so she likes dudes with blonde hair and blue eyes? Doesn't that mean that she likes dudes that would look like her brother? This is turning into House of the Dragons. The producer then asked Maria if she was attracted to Caesar in any way, shape, or form when they started talking, and she says no, and then proceeds to start laughing. Maria, I heard you like blondes. Well, I'm hoping my friend Abraham Lincoln can change your mind. <laughs> Maria then confirms that she was talking to multiple dudes on the website, not just Caesar, and she liked that Caesar sent her gifts. Maria then adds that she's been all over the world, but she's never been to the United States, and it's her dream to go there because she's been watching shows about Beverly Hills since she was about five years old, and I don't want to ruin that you know American dream that a lot of people have LA is overrated as fuck equally overrated as New York they are the most over romanticized cities in the entire world because of Hollywood when you actually show up there it smells like trash there's a homeless problem it's not as romantic as they make it seem in the movies you guys are gonna learn the hard way for how long did you consider him your boyfriend for the last like two years. There's so many inconsistencies with the Caesar Maria storyline, one of which is that Caesar claimed that they were in a relationship for five years, and Maria, on the other hand, said that they were in a relationship for only two years. When we had met on the site, we were talking, and then uh, we had took a break. After that, I went back on the site to see if she was there. Then I wanted to get off the site and actually have one-on-one uh, -on -one with her. Okay, Mr. Simp Narrative, so you lied about being in a relationship with this girl for five years. It seems like you're exaggerating a lot of different things, Caesar. From what I'm gathering, Caesar's relationship with Maria is very similar to the relationship with Mike and Jimena, because much like Mike, Caesar offered to financially support Maria, and in return, she gets off the websites, her primary source of income at the time. Caesar said he has sent you around $40,000. It's not so, and he knows it. How much money has Caesar sent you over the years? There is no special amount, but not 40,000. Would you say it was? <laughs> wow, Caesar's telling her to stop talking with that glare. Let me know if you believe Maria in the comments below. Caesar at times does have a cap level over 3,000 because he also claimed that he was friends with Drake, which is highly unlikely that he's friends with Champagne Poppy. Have you sent Maria any more money? Yeah, I did send her money. I think it was like around like, like, 2,000 to 3,000. Then that's when um, we stopped talking. Actually, I refuse it. Oh yeah, for sure, Maria. Your simp sent you between 2,000 and $3,000 American and you turned it down? Oh, please. She took the money, but I'm not gonna send you any more money. Finally done sending this girl money after going on the show 90 Day Fiance and obtaining a social media career. Many fans of the show have questioned the legitimacy of their segment because of all the holes in their story, and I agree, at times, this can feel very sus. 5,000? Maybe for all these five years we was together, but we actually was not five years together. Mm. Anyways, the entire cast gangs up on Maria and proceeds to grill her, but no one grills Caesar because he's the gullible American. I know I'm probably crazy for doing this, and I know I you know, I should have just, just cut it off, but I want to show the world that that you know that she's a good person and that I still want to try and make it work. I understand why Maria is upset somewhat because this narrative is false. They both used each other. He used her to go on TV and try to make himself look as good as possible. It's not like she put a gun to his head and said, hey man, you need to send me this money. He did that out of his own will. Towards the end of the tell, I start to believe Maria more than Caesar because he once again doubles down on, I want to show everyone in the world that true love is out there and me and Maria can work out our differences and I want to prove to everybody that she's a good person. You're always like, my, my, my first love, baby, you're, you're my everything, baby. I, I just wanted to hold you in my arms and just to look into your eyes. Funny enough, to this day, it's speculated that Maria and Caesar never met up in real life. Now, I say that, however, on the spinoff show, 90 Day Fiance Self-Quarantine, Caesar claims that he met up with Maria in real life. We're all like, oh. Well, the thing about it was she was upset that I just came out of nowhere, but I did try to contact her, but she was really upset about that. She felt like that, you know, what if she wasn't here? What would I have done? However, when the producers ask Caesar to show them pictures of him and Maria together so they can believe what he's claiming, he says he doesn't have the pictures because Maria went through his phone after they took photos together and deleted the photos. And he didn't find out until he was on the plane ride back to the United States. For some reason, uh, they got erased. What did you make of that? Well, see, I didn't know that the pictures were gone until after I was on the plane. 
And so when I was on the plane, they were gone. Which is interesting. Like you would think if you're waiting to see somebody for five years, you'd be IG living that shit to make sure that everyone knows you're not actually insane. Not to mention when you delete a photo, it goes in your recently deleted. So you expect us to believe that she went in your recently deleted. Like how long did you give her your phone for? Caesar also feels incredibly defeated because he made many attempts over the numerous years to meet up with Maria in real life. And she provided every excuse to not meet up with him. But you know who Maria did meet up with in real life? And even went as far as to bang out Jesse Darcy's ex, AKA the Steak Master 3000, ladies and gentlemen, because he was blonde and blue eyed. Would you believe it? We uh, uh, are here with uh, the beautiful Maria, my uh, great friend. After the tell ended, the whole world thought that Maria was a scammer and she felt really disrespected by this because she thought that she didn't get a fair shake by TLC. So she did an interview with the Steak Master 3000 to get her side of the story out there. I've worked in restaurants, so, okay. I'm done. I watched this entire around 30 minute interview so you guys don't have to and oh my god I lost so many brain cells because you guys don't realize how the show really makes this shit watchable like when it's just the cast members by themselves doing things they are so boring one very important thing I noticed throughout this entire interview is the way that Maria looked at Jesse was so thirsty like Caesar would have had to pay so many V bucks for her to look at him that way I'm here in Barcelona but I'm not here alone and <laughs> Hello, Maria. Hi. Hello. Right. I'm shy. Hurry. <laughs> but she's so sweet and um, yeah, I think it's cute that you're shy. Okay, we are Russian speaking. Mafia just occupied Jesse. He and Barcelona. Hey. So Working let's out. Do, yeah. Let's do some workouts. Yeah. You're such a beautiful lady. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh, I guess what happens in Barcelona stays in Barcelona. After things didn't work out with Maria on the show, Caesar went wine and painting, but he went alone because he doesn't have nobody to love, which is really sad. Caesar's 49 from Jacksonville, North Carolina, and he asked this girl if she's a runner because she's been running through his mind all day. Uh -huh. Next thing you know, the woman to his left says, you would have been better off actually saying, did it hurt? Like, did it hurt when she fell from heaven? And you know what this feels like to me? When you say a fire joke and someone just regurgitates your same joke, but in a shittier way. Yeah, so like, we're not socks, but we'd make a great pair or whatever. Caesar's back blessing our eyeballs in season three of The Single Life, and he admits that he's about to be 50 years old and he's really down bad in his feels that he doesn't have somebody to spend the rest of his life with. Right now he's painting his cat Sebastian, and he admits that Sebastian is his best friend, and I'm with him, humans are way overrated. Caesar then explains his relationship with Maria and how it ended from his point of view. Maria took advantage of my kindness, and I feel really stupid. With all due respect, sir, that's not what happened. She took advantage of your stupidity, not your kindness. Besides, when we take a step back and look at the situation as a whole, you got an entire social media career from your relationship with Maria. This is your third time on a 90 Day Fiance show. Meanwhile, I haven't seen Maria in one 90 Day Fiance show after your season. Caesar says on the show that even though Maria broke his heart, he's not going to stop trying to find his true love. He then describes what kind of girl he's looking for. And that is a curvy girl with the hourglass figure, age range between 32 and 40 years old, that's financially independent and willing to be his best friend for life. It's not impossible, but I think that he needs to really focus less on looks because that was his problem in the last relationship with Maria. He glorified her purely based on looks. I mean, Taco, by the way, so don't think I got shit in my teeth. I'm not just like that. Since I broke up with Maria, I've been trying to date and I've been striking out at home. So now I decide to do online dating again. Wow, how y'all gonna do us like that? What a missed opportunity. I wanna see how he interacts with American girls on dates. Why wouldn't they film that? Caesar then informs the audience that this time he's tackling dating in a different way. So instead of going through the websites and sending girls money, he decided to hit up a matchmaker in Ukraine named Katarina. So he's gonna leave for Ukraine in five days and Katarina's gonna help him find the love of his life for a price. The basic matchmaking offer starts from 500 uh, US dollars. <laughs> And we will find the only one special lady for you. You would think that the past Maria transaction would have left a bad taste in this guy's mouth concerning Ukrainian women, but nah, he hasn't given up on his quest to find the Ukrainian clitoris. <laughs> Caesar says, I'm interested in Ukrainian women because they are articulate, motivated, intelligent, smart, funny. You know, they care about the man for himself, not for his looks, they care about his soul. <laughs> Dudes in La La Land, physical attraction is important in every relationship. You have to be physically attracted 
attracted to your partner. So saying something like the girls in Ukraine don't care about looks is ridiculous because every woman and every man cares about looks, quite frankly. And it's funny that you're speaking on behalf of every woman in Ukraine. Like, have you met every woman in Ukraine? I don't know about y'all, but I like to stay away from generalizations because usually it makes you come across as really stupid. It's really strange to watch a guy like this glorify another country's women when the women in our country share all the same qualities that he mentioned. Hear me out, maybe it's not about the country the woman resides in, but about the woman herself because everyone's different, right? You're the only unique you. I will email the list of ladies I can recommend according to your preference. Okay. Oh, she's gonna email him girls profiles on AOL. Are we back in the MySpace era? When he gets to Ukraine, is she gonna pull up in a horse carriage? I might have to break my quill out of retirement and write him a handwritten letter and inform him about the advances in modern technology. I feel like this is the kind of guy you would invite over to your house. You'd sit down on the couch, put on Netflix, and he'd be like, where's the DVD player? Katrina is gonna send me some profiles that she thinks are the best matches for me. And then at the meet and greet, I can actually meet these ladies in real life and not online. When you see them in person, you can kind of know if they're not into you. Yeah, actually, the more I think about it, meeting a girl in real life is different than meeting a girl online. She's doing all the legwork for me. This is actually hurting my brain. I feel like he's making the situation way more complicated than it has to be. Bro, you're verified on Instagram. Why won't you just DM girls in Ukraine that have Instagram? It's still too early to determine whether the service is worth it or not, but I don't understand why he would pay someone do something for him that he can do himself. Next thing you know, Caesar once again gives us the same line that he gave when he was in a relationship with Maria. He says, even if it's me working seven days a week to pay for this trip, it's worth it. I hate when they do this shit. We're not gonna fall for this, I work so hard for my money narrative anymore. We all work hard for our money, bitch, and you're getting paid to be on the show. According to Goggle, 90 Day Fiance pays their cast members between 1,000 and 1,500 per episode. Landing a spot in 90 Day Fiance happily or after will score you a little more cash, but it doesn't go up that much more. Caesar's been in four episodes already on The Single Life. That means he's already made around $5,000. Let's subtract $500 for this Ukrainian hitch operation. Flights from North Carolina to Ukraine around this time and booked in advance, let's say $1,000. A reasonable hotel there around this time, let's say $100 a day. Man's only gonna be there for about five days. So total, he probably spent around $2,500 on this trip if 90 Day Fiance didn't cover the trip because a lot of times they will actually pay for the trips. If the math is mathing, this dude's already made over $2,000 and we're only on episode four. So this whole narrative of, oh my God, I'm so poor because of this trip to Ukraine. It's not gonna work. It worked last time because you were giving a lot of money to Maria, or at least you claimed that you gave her $40,000 over the duration of your relationship. Something that we don't know to be confirmed true. And this is the point I highlighted earlier that the narrative never changes and it's actually annoying. I don't like that they do this. I wanna see character growth and this storyline feels forced because you're once again going for the narrative of, oh, I'm broke and I spent all my money on Ukrainian women. It's not the case. My 50th birthday is right around the corner and it feels like I don't really have much time. Disclaimer, this is before Russia invaded Ukraine. After losing around $50,000 dating Ukrainian women, or so he claims, Caesar is once again back in Ukraine and he's ready to suck and fuck. We are all in Ukraine. Caesar admits to the audience that this time he's feeling more confident about the experience because he's no longer dealing with these online scammer girls. He's dealing with their pimp, whoops, I mean matchmaker. Caesar said Ukraine is beautiful, but he feels like he's the only African-American brother in town. Yeah, I don't doubt that. Eastern Europe is Caucasian as fuck. I'm about to meet Katrina, the matchmaker. I'm excited. I've been thinking about this like- Anyway, Caesar admits that he's nervous for the meet and greet situation with these girls because he's never done something like this before, which is understandable. Katarina says that she helps people find their love. They got clients from America and Europe and have had more than 70 couples since 2013. I don't know if that's an impressive statistic or not because I would have to know how many guys they provided the service for since 2013. And in the words of Maria, I am not accountant. <laughs> uh, the meet and greet party. There will be around 15 ladies who are interested Oh. When Caesar heard 15 girls, he was practically licking his lips. He is beyond excited. These are Caesar's profile pictures on the matchmaking website. First picture was fire. The other ones were kind of ass. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. But I feel like if you're going to take a shirtless photo, do it in the backyard doing something. Chop wood in the backyard like a fucking lumberjack. You know, make a statement. Have a theme for your photos. If you're just in the corner with your shirt off flexing, I feel like that's kind of cringe. These photos are very low effort. And you can tell that Caesar didn't put a lot of thought into this. But if he put more thought into his pictures, he would would get more action because your pictures are a glimpse into who you are. Anyways, a pimp named Katarina says that she doesn't have a lot of black skin clients. It's not a typical situation in Ukraine. Katarina then asks Caesar what he's gonna wear to the function and he responds that it's gonna be a surprise. Way to remain mysterious, Caesar. Ooh. Going to the meet and greet. 
I want to be the best dressed man for all those women and let them know that I'm serious. Dude wants to be the best dress, dressing like a mater d' from the Golden Corral. Good God. I think the blue bow tie is throwing everything off. I would love to dig up Joan Rivers and hear what she has to say about this. Caesar's looking like the guy that parks cars at the Ritz Carlton, feeling good. Steps outside, sees a limo coming for him. He's like, whoa, I got a limo. Next thing you know, he steps inside a limo and sees that there's three other dudes in the limo and he's like, what? There's other people in here? Oh, yeah, hey, hey, hey. Wait, you, got, you guys speak English? Come, Come on, on yeah. in. Trust with you. How scammy is it that a pimp named Katarina didn't give these dudes a heads up that the 15 girls that were promised would be split between four men? Oh, man, you guys didn't expect this from me. <laughs> oh, but it's awesome. A lot of surprises, huh? Oh, it's so awkward. Talk about unethical business practices. Caesar looks absolutely shook, and I get it, because not only is he competing with three other dudes now, he's competing with three other dudes dressed like the Monopoly man. <laughs> And this bitch Katarina was trying to convince us that this was a legitimate service. She didn't even give these guys a heads up that they'd be competing with each other. Right away, it's very apparent to the audience that Caesar starts to close off and feel very intimidated by the other men in the car. He says that they're all handsome when I don't really think that they are. But I think Caesar's just his toughest critic and he's really in his own head right now. What's your story? I was dating this uh, Ukrainian girl. Uh, for five years, I was giving her uh, $800 every two weeks and then she broke up with me. Ugh. Caesar, I get that that's what you're known for on the show, but these guys don't know you. This is a new season. You can reinvent yourself. You don't need to keep harping on the story about you getting scammed by Maria. Before Maria and you were even on the show, you were with another girl for 13 years and that was your high school sweetheart. Like, open up about that. I would like Caesar more if he didn't keep things so surface level and shared more personal details about himself. What do you guys do for work? We have a golf man. Oh. I do some coaching of golf and I play for money every once in a while. They start talking about what their jobs are and Caesar starts getting more in his feels because he feels like he's not exactly where he wants to be in life, which is relatable for majority people. This guy, Jerry, teaches golf. This guy, Ryan, used to be a fisherman for about eight years, but then he got into Bitcoin and bought low and now he's selling high. So he's able to travel and just build up his crypto portfolio. This isn't the biggest bag over the head punch in the face I ever got. God damn it! The last guy, Tim, was very vague about what he does, but he just said that he owns a lot of online businesses and is able to work remote. Yeah, you know, nail I Nail technician? Uh, yeah, nail technician. Oh, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, no, I've just never seen the nail technician. Yeah. I've seen. I have seen. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. The nail tech business is profitable. Pay off that, pay your own bills. And... Oh, yeah. All yeah. right. OK, cool. OK. Yeah, being a nail tech does pay well, Ryan. Maybe you should read a book. Mr. Fisherman, I bought cryptocurrency. What does that even mean? Caesar admits the audience that walking into this event, he's feeling really insecure because he's perceiving these other men as more successful than he is. I just want to say to him, you don't know what their bank account balance is. You don't know what their assets are. You don't know if they are successful. They can be lying to you for all you know with shows like The Tinder Swindler and that one with the girl that got all that money on Wall Street and she wasn't worth shit. I forgot what the name was, but anyone can say anything about themselves. You know, realistically, people People lie about net worth on Instagram and in person. Also, Caesar, last time I checked, these dudes are on TV because of you. So I think that a lot of people do glorify that, you know, being on TV or being famous or whatever it is. So you haven't laid up on them, actually. Caesar's got big Eeyore energy and he's like, oh no, these other guys are so successful. If they were successful, they wouldn't be there, bro. The young bachelors walk in, they greet the pimp cat arena, and then they go upstairs because it turns out the party's upstairs. It reminds me of prom, but with 15 Ukrainian girls and four old dudes. Caesar Latella nervous seems like he could throw up at any moment and he admits to the audience that this could be his last chance for love so he really doesn't want to mess up. I don't know why he's putting so much pressure on himself but anyway Jerry the golf instructor walks over to a table of girls and he has a really like what's the voice he sounds like the villain from Roger Rabbit. And now we just say hello? Yeah you can you can just uh, Hi, ladies. To... <laughs> How are you? And Caesar watches as Jerry, the golf instructor, walks over to a table of girls and starts up a conversation and says, yes, I'd like some of that, please. So he attempts to do the same. Who speak English, everyone? Almost. Almost, okay. So what do you all look for? I'm not looking for anything or anybody I'm choosing. 
Oh, meow, huh? I am choosing. It's so awkward and Caesar striking out of there, but real quick question. Does any girl at this table seem like they're interested in him? Katarina communicated to him that all 15 girls looked at his profile and liked what they saw and wanted to go on a date with him. So anybody want to ask a question? My name is Jeff. I don't know why Caesar's speaking to these girls in broken English and vague sentences. It's just going to be that much easier for them to misinterpret what he's saying. So why you want to buy from Ukraine? I try to get wife in the United States, you know, but nobody, you know, nobody want me. 3,000 IQ play. None of the girls in my native country wanted me, so like, do y'all want me? What made you think that these girls want you if they know that none of the girls back home wanted you and y'all speak the same language? Also, this is actually insulting for these girls to hear because what you're telling them is that they're the second round draft pick and you didn't even try to get to know them yet. You're just telling them that the girls in America didn't want you, so that's why you're here trying to woo them, but they don't want leftovers. So he's really bad at social cues and he made a terrible first impression. It would have been way better to ask the girls something like, what do you like to do for fun? Just simple things to learn more about them, not things like, what do you look for? Like that's so fucking vague. You didn't even say, what do you look for in a guy? Also for Caesar and guys like Caesar, if you're so hell bent on dating these foreign girls, why don't you learn a couple simple sentences in their native tongue? That would go a long way. Like I would be really impressed to see that, but they don't because that would take work, right? Like guys like this expect to pull a 10 out of 10 in a foreign country, but they put in zero effort. Anyway, Caesar struck out at the first table he went to, but as my football coach told me growing up, don't be a pussy, get back out there. So Caesar walks over to a table where Tim is sitting and Tim is actually doing a really good job. You know, caesar has been really in his own head comparing himself to these other dudes, but Tim is actually being a team player and says to Caesar, okay, so the girls are gonna introduce themselves and what they like, and then we're gonna introduce ourselves and say what we like. Caesar says, in the back of my mind, I can't stop thinking no one's gonna like a regular guy like me. Self-doubt is very prevalent in our society, especially with apps like Instagram, where we all show the best moments of our lives, you know, the success, but none of the trials and tribulations that we had to encounter to obtain the success. And it just seems like we live in a very superficial world, right? So I understand being in your own head, but you can't succeed unless you believe you can succeed. Uh, I am Caesar. I am a uh, nail technician. I do pedicure and manicure. Oh, me too. I'm a nail master. Oh, you are? And I do... Uh, oh, you do eyebrow? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I do yeah. eyebrow too. Yeah, wax, okay. arm. I can do neck. for your end. You can make for me. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, she does nails, he does nails. It makes perfect sense. They should link up. So after he figured out that this girl does nails, he says to the audience, I have a connection. And I'm just like, wow, your idea of having a connection with someone is very different from the majority of us, right? Because... Having one thing in common doesn't mean that you have a romantic connection with somebody, but to Caesar it does. As delusional as he is, I think that this conversation helped him get out of that dark place that he put himself in. So I'm really happy that that happened. Caesar then gets up, goes to another table and encounters a girl that looks just like Natalie, but with a different nose. And I swear to God, this could be Natalie's sister because they have the same staring problem. And she looks at Caesar and says, I love your hat. Can I see your hat? Uh, <laughs> your birthday. My birthday is uh, March. Oh, March. Yes. You fish. Mm -hmm. I really don't like, but if my girlfriend like, I fish for her. No, she's talking about Zodiacs right now, bro. She just asked you when your birthday month was. She's not talking about actually going fishing with you. Connect the dots. Now, the good news is for Caesar, this actually turns to a joke because he says to them, I thought you were asking me if I'd go fishing. And then they all start laughing. So it actually results in him breaking the ice with them, which is a good thing. I actually think that this girl and Caesar make a cute couple because she's the off-brand version of Natalie. She's into astrology. When Caesar stands up and then the girl that he got along with that was also a nail tech stands up and she's a whole head taller than him. She's even taller than him with his top hat on. And I was just like, it's not a make or break, but it's highly unlikely that she's gonna go for him because he's a short king. You're not six five and above. You are not getting this. <laughs> In our next episode on Caesar, we'll be covering his three different dates with three different Ukrainian women and more. Make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Comment below, subscribe. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.